Hi, I'm Liv and welcome back to the Waterstones vlog. So today I'm going to talk to you about a book that I think is very special and really important and one that I think a lot of people will love and that is Lydia Yuknovich's The Book of Joan. Now I had an early reading copy of this. What I'm going to do is superimpose the cover just here while I talk. So Lydia Yuknovich is an American writer who has developed a bit of a cult following in the US but hasn't been published in the UK before. So Canongate are publishing a novel, The Book of Joan, and at some point in the future I believe will be publishing her memoir, uh, The Chronology of Water, which is one that particularly sparked her sort of cult following in America. So The Book of Joan is essentially a futuristic, post-apocalyptic retelling of Joan of Arc. And what Lydia Yuknovich does is she uses this story to say something about our relationship with the planet and the relationship between men and women and gender. It is fiercely feminist, fiercely intelligent and unabashedly so. And it's raw, it's vital, it's bubbling and bristling, full of energy, and it is absolutely fantastic. So it posits Joan as a young girl who discovers she has these gifts where she can sort of communicate and interact with nature and the natural world in a way not seen before. So the book charts the disintegration of our planet both in terms of the environment and our relationship with the planet and this war that breaks out after the rise of a populist former reality TV star, uh, Jean de Men, who becomes this figurehead of society, the richest of society society who end up building an off-world sort of satellite station where all the richest of society go to live. And it merges these two strands together which sort of forms the main thrust of the sci-fi strand of the book which is that the disintegration of a planet and solar flares and all of the devastation that has occurred to the planet have led to um, infertility, erosion of gender in terms of quite literally genitalia is no more. There is no man, there is no woman, people can't have sex anymore. It's this sterile sort of environment now, the planet, and which is part of the reason why these richest uh, of society end up going off world to survive. But it's unclear what they're sort of surviving because as I say, there's no reproduction. It's just these rich people in society and there is a finite lifespan that they have and they are plundering Earth's final resources in order to power this off-world sort of home station. Now, as well as our off-world main characters in Christine and Trinculo, who are trying to subvert the order of things up there and go against the established story of Joan of Arc and the truth of that, um, you also get to meet the sort of last few remaining inhabitants of Earth and see how they're doing down there. And I won't spoil the sort of plot in terms of who you meet where, um, but it's all very good. The other really intriguing thread in this book is the importance of literature and storytelling and the power of stories and truth in stories. So in this world there are these things called skin grafts which is essentially kind of tattooing and also skin stretching and it's used as a way of telling stories but it's also a mark of status and there are lots of descriptions of some of the higher status people having these folds of skin grafts coming down from their faces in, in great waves to sort of replicate hair. One of the main characters, Christine, is an expert in skin grafting and she has chosen to use her own body as a canvas for the story of Joan of Arc. And that's her way of telling the true story of Joan of Arc. And then other people become involved in that as well. And it's a very important part of the story, this notion of storytelling, who gets to tell stories and who gets to tell the truth. The notion that history is always written by the victor comes up and how we play with that and what really is the truth of, in this case, the story of Joan of Arc. How is that twisted? How is that disseminated amongst people? And what becomes of that, how does that become a legend or a myth as opposed to the reality being stamped out by some tyrannical overseer. So like many futuristic post-apocalyptic novels, it is very timely and very of the present. It deals with, you know, fake truths and the notion of ownership over truth. It deals with gender, how we see gender, how we interact with gender, how we feel gender. And it deals with our relationship with the natural world and how we should be careful what control we do have, what control we don't have. Where it starts to veer off into the more sci-fi elements, I think maybe die-hard sci-fi fans will take umbrage possibly with the world building in it. But you know what? For me, that is part of its charm and part of its point, really is that this future is messy, it's chaotic, there are a lot of answers that we don't know and that we can't possibly know because of the things that we have done to the world and to society. In a way, and for me, it's kind of a the message is the medium and the medium is the message type idea going on with the Book of Joan and it's more sort of high concept sci-fi things where the chaos that has been wrought on this world means that the science is in flux and so the futuristic elements aren't the sort of main thrust of it, that's not the main point of the story, it's about storytelling 
it's about what we do to the planet and it's about what we do to each other. As I say, it is unabashedly intelligent, it is raw, it is vital, it is radical, it is messy yet beautiful. The prose itself is some of the most astonishing I've ever read, particularly when Lily Yuknovich is taking characters and making them talk about storytelling and truth. It is just exquisite prose that you will just devour. There is perhaps an easy parallel to draw with Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale, and I think if you've read The Handmaid's Tale, and if you haven't, you may be one of very few, and I urge you to go and read that one very soon, but if you have read The Handmaid's Tale, there will be sort of similarities, but this is much more sort of sci-fi futuristic. But don't let that put you off if you're not a sci-fi reader, because the thrust of this book is this fiercely feminist, natural world, power struggle that is just so beautifully wrought that you will just absolutely love it. I, for one, am very excited to read more of Lydia Yuknovich's work. I cannot wait until Canongate published the chronology of Water, and I hope that uh, Canongate will continue to publish some more of her novels uh, in the future. So The Book of Joan is a novel that raises so many questions about gender, fluidity, our relationship with Earth, and power, truth, storytelling. It is utterly bonkers, utterly beautiful, utterly brilliant. And in the words of Rebecca Solnit in one of the reviews, buckle your seatbelts, you're in for a wildly feminist ride.